What I want to think about a little bit today is can we understand a bit better what these models are actually learning? So that could help us understand when they'll succeed or fail or steer them a bit more in the direction that of what we actually want them to learn. So why would a neural network fail? For example, because it actually can't learn what I want it to learn. That's still a question. And Another example is that maybe the model actually fits my data well, but it does it in a way that's very different from what I think it's actually doing. So these are obviously two very big questions. I want to give you just some recent ideas on how to start thinking about them for a certain set of tasks. So the tasks I'm thinking about are things like learning from structures and configurations, like we have molecules we're interested in drug design, for instance, or we are looking at circuits and we're interested in chip design. Or we have data with interrelations like social networks, interactions between molecules like drugs and targets, recommendation, et cetera, et cetera. I'm also thinking about tasks that are a bit more algorithmic in nature, like learning combinatorial optimization tasks, or learning physical systems, trying to forecast them, et cetera, learning their equations. So many of such tasks that have these interrelations can be viewed in a unified way as learning from graphs, learning where the input is a graph. Now, neural networks for such graphs are graph neural networks, and there is basically two types. There is message passing graph neural networks and graph transformers. And in both of these, what we are actually learning is pairwise interactions and how these pairwise interactions are processed at each node. So that's a central operation. Now let's go back to this question, can such models or can my graph neural network actually learn what I want it to learn? In some cases, yes, but unfortunately, in general, there are cases where it's not the case. So there is, it's not always the case. There's limitations, and there's fundamental limitations in the architecture of these message passing networks and also in the task. But to make this a bit more concrete, let me give you one example. So as an example, these architectures cannot recognize cycles in a graph. So look at this molecule. It cannot actually know that there's a ring in this molecule which may be very important for understanding the functionality of this molecule. Is there a remedy? So one practical remedy is to tell the neural network a little bit more about the location of each node in the graph. And we feed that as extra information into the neural network. How is this done? This is usually done with linear algebra. So we compute a certain matrix about the graph, and then we look at the eigenvectors of this. Now the complication is now we feed the eigenvectors into the neural network and eigenvectors are specific mathematical objects that need to be treated the right way, otherwise you lose robustness of your model. So in a recent project we thought about this, we looked at the math of it and we derived an architecture that is sort of a plug-in architecture and that can provably treat the eigenvectors the right way. And it achieves improvements not only in theory but also in practice and gives us a state of the art a positional encoding, that's what these are called. We can improve by looking at like what the neural networks can do, their capability, but there's also the learning part. What does a neural network like to learn? And that depends on many factors. It depends on the data that I show to the model. It depends on the model itself, how I set it up, and how I train it. So often I can understand what the neural network learns by looking at its failures. Let me show you a simple example. So let's say I want to learn what is a sheep, and I show the neural network pictures of sheep on grass. They are always on grass, so the neural network may actually just learn that grass means sheep. So it works as long as all the sheep it sees are on grass, but if it sees only grass, it fails. So this last image is actually a different image from its training data. It's called an out of distribution example. But it tells us what the neural network learned. So what would this look like on these more complex algorithmic tasks? It may mean that you're training a neural network on small graphs. They are cheaper to label, they are easier. But you'd like it to do, perform the same task on these larger graphs, like different set of molecules, larger circuits, larger physical systems, et cetera. It's a reasonable question, a practical question, but it doesn't always work. So the question is, can we actually understand when the neural network would generalize to these different instances? So let's first look at the data. So what we may want to understand is I have my new data set. Would the model actually work on this data set? So I have to compare this data set to my training data. Now I have to compare graphs. And in fact, what we found is it may be very useful to look at your data the way the neural network sees your data. So it may look more like that. So it sees the data actually as a collection of these local structures. 
And using that, we can predict whether a shift in the input will actually change the output of the model a lot or only a little bit. So may you want to rely on it or not? Depends on how different the data looks to the model. Second, the actual model architecture is also important, how the model is actually set up. So here I want to look at the neural network as a collection of learnable parts that are arranged in a specific way. And if this arrangement matches the a valid computational procedure for your task, then the neural network learns it much more easily. That's something that we see in many examples. So in a graph neural network, these learnable parts are the pairwise interactions and how these are processed at each node. So this matches very well with many physics tasks that really rely on these pairwise interactions. It also easily mimics many graph algorithms. But now which algorithm your neural network implements depends on what are these local learnable parts doing, these local operations. So if we can understand what these local operations are doing, if my input data shifts, we can predict what the full model is doing and whether it will generalize or not. So by looking at that, we found that even small changes in how you set up these learnable parts, like changing from a sum to a maximum operation, can determine whether this neural network will still perform, say, computing a shortest path on this larger graph or not. It depends on the local operations. Now, these principles that I briefly talked about of the global alignment to the task and thinking about the local operations, they underlie many practical successes in many different areas of deep learning. Going forward, many modern tasks in AI are actually very algorithmic in nature or rely on interrelations um, in your data. So this question still remains valid. What are the models actually learning in such cases? And why are they learning what they are learning? That will help us understand better when we can rely on these models and steer them in the right way, improve the models, and use them to the most of our benefit. Thank you.